the live view. Let's get back to the live view. Let's put on live view. Just hit the live button and then we can make this a bit bigger maybe. So we will see. Come on, it's a bit slow. And then we can move it out of the frame so we will see the shot somewhere around there. And now everything is pitch black on the live view, of course, because we have the settings set for so we will get this black frame. So then we have to switch the settings. And this can be a bit, I mean, it takes a lot of time to switch all the time. I am very happy that I have a Canon 5D Mark IV because then I can program this C1, C2, C3 on the dial here. And then I just switch to C3. And then I programmed a setting. I should not be in the, in the frame. You see there? Now we're in live view. Hello. Um, now we see it there. And now it will be a bit complicated because we have the LEDs on. And you should not have LEDs. Do we have the remote? Can I switch off the LEDs? Is this enough with one? Yes. We can leave one LED. We can have this on, I think. Or should we kill both? It will look more like the shot. Yes. But we can have this one on. Okay, you see now the live view there. And we will see where to place the light. Because we have this guide light that will guide us where to set it. So I will take a look. If I change this diffusion frame, if I put it closer, I want to see if there will be any difference. Now it's in the shot. Maybe I can take it out. And now it looks like the, this dark um, line on the left side, that's the frame here that is reflected in the glossy label. Now it's almost out of the frame. And now we take the shot. And then we have to go back to the manual mode and then the live view turns black. And then we can take the shot, because you see up here how it switches. Now it switch, I switch back to manual mode and he will remember that I used one two hundred of a second, 5.6 ISO 100. And then we take a shot and then we see, yes, now we're getting closer to, to get rid of this black line here. I'm not sure if we should use that one. I think it's nice that it goes like this, but I would love to get a bit of a gradient on the top there too. Let's see if it's possible. Back to live view, C3 mode. And probably I should, I should move it. Can I move it a bit? If I move it very much like this, now it's not so nice. Now we see the, the frame, the black frame there. And when I move it closer to the product, now it's in the frame. Actually, I do not have, need to have it on this wide way, horizontal. I could use it vertical, really. But maybe we should, how far, how close can I go before it ends up in the picture? Yeah, I think maybe we should leave it like this. Back to the manual mode, and then we have to take a shot on the computer. And let's see, if, if it's back to the same, did it disappear a tiny bit more? Let's keep it like this. It's kind of nice. It looks like it's belled. I mean, like it's round, just like the bottle. So maybe it's nice to show this small black edge there. We'll see. Maybe we can tweak it and turn this later. But now let's move on. I think we should add another flash. Because if you have two, actually three flashes is the best. If you have three flashes, flash heads or strobes or monolights or whatever, then you can do any shots, I would say, three. Because often you want a third one for the background. Let's put up another flash. And I told you I want to have a bit of, I want to have a bit of light on the left side. So I'll put up this another D2 Pro Photo Flash with a zoom reflector and a five degree honeycomb grid. And uh, there's no real, there's no reason why I have a five and a 10. It's just what I have, you know. I should really get another five degree honeycomb grid because I often use the five degree honeycomb grid because 
the spot will be very, very narrow. So now I put this up. I don't know if any light will hit it again. I was going to do like this, you know, will standing in the camera angle, will there be some light, you know, then we have live view. So let's go to live view and let's hit the live view button. Very bright, should be black room, yes. Now we see, now I can stand holding the flash and when I move it, you see? See exactly what we will get. And I want something like, I don't know what I want. I just want, I'm looking for gradients. So it's not super flat, you know. Maybe it was nicer if you feather it away from the product. Maybe there. We can, we can test and see if we will get a nice shot out of this. So let's switch back to manual mode and let's take a shot and see what this light will do. Yes, it's kind of nice. This is the light. It creates and a tiny bit on the cap there. And this is kind of a bonus, it's like a gradient on this surface here. This side is matte, so we really don't need to have this diffusion. But it's not super matte, I see now. It's kind of semi-matte, so maybe we need to have a diffusion. You can always try a diffusion, so let's put up a diffusion. Where is it? Savage Translum Medium Weight. And we need to have a stand, put it up. You know, you don't need to have C stands when you're starting out, because they're quite expensive. There is uh, other alternatives, of course, like this I'm using a lot. This doesn't cost much. It's Manfrotto. This one, um, you can just attach it to a light stand and then you can hold stuff with this in any way you wish, you know. Yes, and now let's put this up in between the light source and the product. And it's good to place it as close as possible to the product without showing up in the frame, of course. Need to take a test shot to see if it's in the frame. Ah, now in live view, I have to go to the computer. Is it in the shot? Extremely much in the shot. Maybe like this. And then we have to go to live view so I will see what I'm doing. Switch to live view. And let's bring the live view window in. And let's switch off the LEDs. <laughs> Where is the remote? Now we will see what this light will do. And we get light on the side, but it's looking kind of flat, I would say. So I will try to feather. Now it should be gone totally, because it's pointing straight down, you know. And um, if I just move it a tiny bit up, what will happen? I want some light on the cap as well. And you know, this could take very long to find the perfect light. So you have to be very patient. What about, what about there? Maybe, let's switch to manual mode. And let's take a shot, and see what we will get on the side there. Don't want it to be super flat. Mm-hmm, it's looking kind of dark. Yes, it, it looks kind of dark. And then you might think, oh, it's in the wrong spot. I need to move it. And then you move it and it's still very flat and boring. But the thing is, when we're shooting like this, I don't know if you see anything in this camera. Do you see this flash? Not really. It comes from up here and shooting tiny bit on this edge. Then, you, you know, the center of the light passing by behind the bottle, really. I'm just using a tiny, tiny bit of the edge. And that means you will lose light because you're turning it away. 
it doesn't mean that it, it necessarily mean that it's in the wrong spot. It can be that you need to increase the power. So let's try that. What's your name? B, you see? Now I put it up a bit, the light, and then I think this is kind of nice that we have this light and then it's brighter back here and then it's darker. So should we have a third flash on the background? Maybe we should have a white. I will put that on, take a shot. It's just a soft box. It's a, a pro photo head with a soft box. It shoots up. So let's take a shot. I just want to have some kind of white background. Yes, like this. And I always tell you, I start with the background. But now the background is not that important. I can always do a nice background in Photoshop to make a precise gradient or whatever. White, black, red, yellow, blue. So now we just have this bright white background to be able to take cut out the product. So this is it. I'm wondering if the front light A is a bit too bright. I'm testing to take down quite a lot because I really like when the side is yes I think I will go for this. Yeah let's go for this. Normally, you know, I spend on every light, I see now, this has to go a bit quicker, this tutorials, so the light is not 100%. The front light, I would love to have a bit gradient on the cap, and we don't have that really. So this flash can be placed a bit differently, I feel. Okay, there we have the shot. You know, it's... Uh, the tricky thing is to get the perfect gradients. That's what I'm hunting all the time. And you have to move it millimeter by millimeter to find it. And I hope this helped you to, to start to understand glossy matte surfaces and how you should treat them. Um, it's, of course, very good to have many flashes to set one flash for one specific spot you know in a perfect world i mean now i happen to have a lot of flashes but i wanted to show it with like two and three one on the background because normally i would take a flash for the cap and just feather it off you know to get a perfect spot on the cap gradient and then i have one on the label on the front and then one or two at the side, and me, maybe even a rim light on the side also, on the other side. And you can build this up with light by light, and you only need reflectors with honeycomb grids and diffusion. Okay, so I hope you think this was helpful a bit, and if you do, please hit thumbs up because it will help the channel a lot. And also subscribe, of course, if you're not a subscriber, and hit that bell, click all, and then you'll get all notifications in the future. And as always, guys, I will see you next time.